Our most recent discovery from Ethiopia is a fossil foot. It's a partial fossil foot that, quite frankly, is quite shocking. It's an extremely important specimen because it opens up a window into our past and how our foot evolved that we didn't have before. Humans are the only living mammals to walk on two feet. And it's a very peculiar way to get around. And it's actually the defining characteristic of the human lineage is walking on two feet. As a researcher that's interested in working backwards and figuring out when did we begin to walk upright? How, what stages did we go through to walk upright? The only evidence that you really have is you've got to go to Africa and you've got to go where we go in Ethiopia and you've got to search for the fossils. And that's what I do, and that's what Johannes Haile Selassie does, and our colleagues, is that we go back, we find the fossils, and that allows you to actually reconstruct how these animals walked and the steps, the steps as it were, that they went through to get there. We know that the foot bones are younger than 3,460,000 years old. And we know that because we have demonstrated that they lie above, by about 27 meters, a volcanic tuff, a layer of ash that was erupted from a volcano and deposited onto the ground. And that is an example of a volcanic tuff right here from the project area. And what we see are a lot of bits of pumice, clasts of volcanic glass. But also within the tuff are crystals, minerals that crystallized during the eruption. And those minerals lock in some radioactive elements at the time that they formed. And so the tuff can be dated by the decay of those radioactive elements and knowing how much are present of them. My initial reaction when I first saw these foot bones was one of quite frank surprise. I thought I knew what to expect at that age because I had studied some of the other Ethiopian fossils that are roughly the same age. When I saw this, I realized immediately these don't fit. They didn't fit. So these are the eight bones of the new fossil. I've laid them out here on the table. The original fossils are now in Ethiopia at the National Museum in Addis Ababa. But these are extremely detailed casts. This has a big toe that's standing off on the side, very much like this. This is a chimpanzee foot, and the main character is this big thing. Its toe, its big toe, is very much opposable, much like a thumb. So this is a climbing adaptation. Compare it to the human. And we are the only primates, along with our ancestors, that have taken the big toe that used to stand out on the side as a grasping big toe, and we now bring it into line with the rest of our feet. Now to really appreciate the significance of this foot and what it tells us, we have to compare it to some other fossils that we've, already, that we've known about for years. And I have here casts of the very famous Lucy fossil. Lucy was living at the same time that this animal was, in fact, very close to one another. What do we know about Lucy? Well, she sets the stage. Because from Lucy, we can tell, this is her thigh bone, her left thigh bone, we can tell for several reasons, her knee, her hip, that she walked upright in essentially the same manner that you and I walk upright. Now, we don't have much, unfortunately, of Lucy's foot. And this is another individual of her species. Now, this is another big toe. This is domed on the top which allows you to say that this animal, the Lucy type of animal, Australopithecus, was towing off and had the same amount of joint mobility that you and I have. And I want you to note that both of them have joint surfaces that extend onto the top. Now, we go to the new foot that was living at the same time as Lucy, or Lucy's species, no dome. That alone tells you this animal was still grasping and it was not using its toe the way you and I do, but the Lucy specimen was. So we have a divergent type of bipedality. One, the Lucy animal that is walking upright, committed to walking upright on the ground, but not this one. This new specimen is walking upright, went on the ground, but doing it in an awkward fashion, not like us, 
but still maintained its big toe grasping ability. So we, what we see here, two different groups, and that was one of the big surprises. This fossil foot raises questions in my mind about the relationship between those feet, the organism that was walking around, and the environment. We have found a lot of fossils of Lucy-like uh, animals, and this is the first one that we've found that's clearly so different. Why do we now find it? Is it that we're beginning to piece together a bit of environment, this wooded, highly wooded environment, that the fossils of Lucy are not found in? Now that we have this partial foot that tells us so much, of course what we want to know is what, what, what does its head look like? What do its teeth look like? What does its knee look like? What does its ankle look like? What was its pelvis like? We don't know. We don't know. But that, I mean, that's the exciting thing, and that's why we go back to the field and look for these other pieces. Until we find skulls and teeth of this organism, we were, we're, we're being cautious about describing it as a new species. Is it within the range of variation within the other fossils? I don't think so. I think it probably does represent a new species, but until we find more evidence, uh, we're, we're being cautious about it.